Yeah, it's loaded. I don't oh, think it, I think you just had it loaded, Ryan. Take a look at that, guys. We got bait. <laughs> there we go, guys. Now that's some bait right there. Now you can, small guys will be calm. Yeah. The bigger guys are gonna be. Gotta feel good now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Guys, this right here is something we have not been able to do since we started fishing in Florida. Now that is a blacked out live well right there. Now let's go fishing. What is going on guys? Ryan from Living Salty. And we are out here in the ocean. I'm here with my dad again here today and we are doing some offshore fishing. It is way rougher out here than we thought it was gonna be. I know the camera never does it justice how rough it actually is here. But check out this guys. We got a live well full of bait. That is right, we blacked out the live well this morning with pilchards, found them in there in the intracoastal. Absolutely epic. We're gonna be fishing three rods to start off with, two bottom rods and one flat line rod, all with the live pilchards. Let's see what we can get hooked up into today. We are just rolling up right over there about 50 feet in front of the boat. We found some seaweed patches. We're pretty far offshore right now, so we're hoping there's gonna be some mahi on there. As you guys can see, I'm practically falling over over here. It's so rough. We're gonna to toss out this lure right here to try to attract the mahi, a nice little Yozuri plug. See if there's any life on the air. You could take a little bit of those live guys and throw them out a couple of those. There's a nice patch, a couple patches over there too. I see nothing under there. Yeah, I'd hop over to the next one. All right, hooked on the pilchard, going out. Hooks might be too big there, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Lines down, 81 feet. So we're planning on drifting over a whole bunch of structure that we have there on the uh, GPS. Drifting at about two miles an hour. So we'll see if it's too fast or we'll see how it goes. There we go, fish on, first fish. Within 10 minutes, first drift here, dad is hooked up on the bottom pole, which was not on the bottom. I'm gonna reel in my pole real quick. It was very close to the bottom. Any sight of what it is yet? Nope. Okay, what do we got going on? Do we have any color? Whew. Live bait pays off. Oh, shoot, we're doubled up. Doubled up. Oh boy. Oh boy. We're doubled up. We gotta put those up top. There we go. We're doubled up, guys. There we go. What do you... You got color? Oh, mine popped off. You got a jack of some sort? Oh, no, it's an amber jack. Uh, it depends what he is, lesser or greater. Hang on. Here, I just need him to open. No. All right, there we go, guys. First fish in the boat. Nice amberjack right there. Gonna find out if it's a greater or a lesser and if we can keep them. Nice yep, measures 20 inches, guys. Lesser amberjack, that means it's a keeper right there. Nice job. First pole bend, first fish in the boat. Here we go, guys. First fish in the boat right there. Lesser amberjack going in the cooler. Woo! Don't drink, I know that. Yeah, time. Fish on, guys, flat line. Flatline just got hit as we we're about to pack up this drift and go for another. Not a bad fish. We got all the lines in, right? Uh, yeah, all the lines are in, except for the bucket. Okay. We got a bucket out to try to slow ourselves down from this drift. Because it's about 20 feet down. What, the uh, flatline did? Yep. 20 feet down, not bad. Had some nice head shakes. Yep. Yeah. Nope, we're good. I can work around it. 
feels nice. I can't, you know what? I don't want to jinx it. It kind of feels like a tuna though. Those, those head shakes like that, it feels like a tuna. They doing like da 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 da. God, I hope it's a tuna. <laughs> oh, jeez, I thought I lost him. He's swimming towards the boat a little. I got color. I don't know what it is yet. I see a pink tail. It's not a tuna. Is that a mudden? It's a mudden. Oh, that's a keeper mudden. Oh, that's a keeper mudden. Get the net, get the net, get the net. Trying to film. Bring him towards the net. Oh, it's a big yeah, baby! Get the camera, there we go! <laughs> Keeper mud snapper! Woo! I have a free hand, hang on. Move, move back, we'll take a couple steps back. Let me open up the bail. Hold on, camera, hang on one second. Yes! Yes, baby, let's go! Let's go! Oh my god, the first on the flat line. What? I'll double check. I believe mud snapper have to be 15 inches for regulation, but that is definitely over 15. That's over 15. Let me go. Let me just go double check the regs. Woo! Yes! Yes! That is what I freaking wanted. There we go, guys. 18 and a half legal mutton snapper right there. Oh my god, that's awesome. He's making a bloody mess. We'll double check him one more time. But yeah. Yep, we will double check. We don't want to take any fish we're not supposed to. And we were at the end of that drift too. End of the drift on a flat line, the mud and snapper hit. Oh. Bottom fish like a mud and snapper hits the flat line. What are the chances? There we go, guys. Our first ever keeper mud snapper. How epic. What an absolutely beautiful fish. This is going to make for excellent dinner tonight. What a beautiful catch right there. Woohoo! Guys, that is hooked up on the bottom pole. I'm clearing mine out of the way. Fish on, fish on. How's it feel? Good. Good. Flat line gonna be in the way? Very simple. Take a line. There you go. Nice day. <laughs> Is it screaming line right now? Oh yeah. There you go. Come back this way. Yeah. Switch sides. Go ahead. There we go. You got color? <laughs> He's floating now? Yeah. What are we thinking? Looks like another Kind of looks like one, yep. Yeah, I see. I got color over here. <laughs> he ain't done yet. Yep, no more amberjacks. There we go. Two lesser amberjacks in the boat. Woo! That is what we're talking about right there. Nice fish. That's Pull them out of the net. Thank you. Beautiful. It is. Yep, looks like another lesser. We'll get a measure on them, see if we want to keep them. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Beautiful second keeper, lesser amberjack. What a beautiful fish. Nice catch there, Dad. Thank you. The flat line got hit. I just put a fresh bait on it. Oh, yeah. That's what we're talking about. No, you're okay. Oh, yeah, you're good. I'm playing him over here. He keeps swimming really hard towards the boat. This is so awesome, guys. On the spinner, we literally just put out a fresh bait on the flat line two seconds ago. Woohoo! There we go. We got color down there. Can't see what it is yet, though. It's a darker color fish. You see him? You see him there? He's swimming right under the freaking boat. Ah, uh, he's way under the boat. He got me so under the boat here, guys. Oh, come on, let's turn his head. Turn his head. Turn his head. 
And his head. Woo! Good fish, guys. Oh, I just wish he didn't have me under the boat. Oh my god! No! Get up here! There we go. Alright, we're straight up and down now. The captain turned the boat. Oh. <laughs> captain can't take all the credit. <laughs> this is a nice fish. This is a nice fish, guys. I haven't had a fish tiring me out in a very long time since we've had our little dry streak here of fishing. This guy's just like, he's not stopping. He's just digging. Come on. That fly, how long was that fly on that for? 10 seconds tops. 10 seconds tops. There we go. Gaining. Gaining on him. After he took a hundred yards off of me, I'm gaining on him. Oh, he's swimming out. Oh, there he is. He's behind the boat. There he is. It looks like a barracuda or a king. Oh my god. It looks like a barracuda or a king, one or the other. He had a shiny side. I don't think it was, I'm pretty sure it wasn't Oahu. Oh my god. We just gotta get him in quickly because it's gonna be a toothy critter, no matter what it is, with that color. You're seeing him, so. <laughs> no, we're not good. I wanna get him to the boat. Oh my god, guys, look at that rod bed. That is epic right there. I don't know if I've ever fought a fish this long. <laughs> I've never had a fish challenge me like this before. This is so awesome. He's not, he's not giving. He's not giving. He was pretty close to that boat that one time. Come on. Come on. Come on. Up you come. Up you come. No, 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 no. Up you come. Up you come. Up you come. He's almost at the surface. You see him? He's right there. Something's following. Ah, come on. Yeah, we gotta get this guy in. We have some pretty strong braid, pretty strong mono. Good size hook. We need to get this guy in. Pull up, reel down. Pull up, reel down. It's a tuna, it's a tuna, it's a tuna. It is a tuna species, guys. I think it's a bonita. Looks like a bonita. That's okay, we still take it. We can use some, we can use some bait trips. That's a big boy bonita, though. Come on. No, no, no! That is a big boy bonita. I know, I wish it was a black man, but. Yes! 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 Oh my god, it's a big boy Benita. Oh my god. Oh my ow, my wrist hurts so much. Woo! Oh man, I wish it was a black fin, but tuna's still cool. Oh guys, look at that Benita right there. That is last Benita we caught was on a trolling pole. Much easier to fight on a trolling pole. Woo! I am tired guys, this fight, 12 minutes. 12 minutes to get this bonita in. Guys, check out this big old bonita right here. On the spinner, absolute beauty. Wish it was a black fin for eating, but we need some more bait strips, some more trunk bait. So this guy's going in the cooler. Epic fight, absolutely epic fight. Fish on guys, dad got hit on the bottom pole here. Not bad actually, whatever it is, right? We just moved spots. We actually headed um, towards uh, back towards land a little bit. We were like 15 miles or so offshore before. Now we're only like a couple, like five miles offshore. So it's hooked up about 50 feet of water here. Starting to get some color. 
Ow, oh, we can't get away from the the uh, lesser amberjacks there today. Why don't you flip them on in? There we go. Nice fish. Same species we were catching before. Lesser amberjack. This one, just a little small. Why did? Jesus. I, you know, I knew that was gonna happen too. Make sure. Don't want to stick my hand in it. It got washed. The rag almost ended up like our bucket, and I'll show you guys the status of our bucket. This is our uh, bucket we're using to slow down our drift, and that's what happens when you forget that it's out when you get stuck in bottom and move. So, rest in peace, bucket. Fish on, what a surprise. Dad's on again with the bottom pole. I'm getting skunked with the bottom pole today. I just get the flat line. <laughs> Said it's small though. It's small. I don't know what it is. It's very small. That's a snapper, right? Uh, oh, I think that's a lane snapper. It looks like a lane snapper. You know, it's funny. I think that's a keeper lane snapper too. Is it really? Yeah, we might have something to add to the fish box here. Okay, we'll find All right, it. we'll see. All right, keeper size lane snapper here. Nice fish, but we're going to throw them back. We have enough fish for tonight. So, let's get him. Let's get him, pal. He's there he goes. Nice fish. Thank you. All right, guys, we are going to head on in. All of our pilchers kind of dies. We're satisfied with the fish we caught today. We had an absolute blast. I loved catching that mun snapper today. And the uh, Bonita, my dad caught tons of amberjacks. Overall, fantastic day here. So, we are going to head on in and start filleting up those fish. And I will see you guys at the play table. We are back at the filet table. We have our beautiful mun snapper here, just about 19 inches, beautiful keeper mun snapper and our first ever keeper mun snapper. So I'm totally stoked about that. So we are gonna show you guys really quickly how to fillet this because it's just like any other fish, but it is my first time filleting it. So I will be showing you guys how I do it here. So we are just going to cut right behind the pectoral fin. And mud snappers have very thick scales, so it is going to be a little hard to get through those scales initial cut, but just take your time, as I say, to do with any other fish. Work your way right down to the backbone, just like that. And we are going to work our way along the backbone, right on the edge of it, just scraping along, making our first cut. Nice and simple. And guys, this just takes practice, trust me. My first fillets, and even my fillets now, don't always come out perfect. But the more fish you catch, the more you can practice. So we are just going to take our time, make nice cuts right up against the backbone right here. Nice 45 degree angle, you guys can see. Now once you get to this point, the spine is right down the middle. So you kind of just got to go over and onto the other side of the fly. So you just kind of angle your knife in there to continue on working along. And then at this point, you can kind of just Find your way, poke it through, clean out the rest of that fly, just like that. And now you're just gonna work your way over the rib cage, which I think is the most difficult part about doing the fly. Some people like to go through the rib cage and just break the bones. Some people like to go on top. I can't really tell you guys what I prefer to do yet. I haven't played enough fish in my lifetime to have a preference yet, but I think it just kind of depends on the fish that you're flying. There we go. There is our mun snapper fly. Now we're going to do the other side, but real quick, I'm just going to show you guys how to skin the fly, the fish here. Bring the fly to the edge of the table, just like this. And we are going to do it right in line with the edge of the cutting board. That way you guys see how this knife, the handle is off to the side. It is completely out of my way. And it's not smacking against the cutting board. It allows you to go nice and level with the fish. So you're just gonna work your knife along the skin. Slowly but surely. Look at that beautiful fillet of this mun snapper. Whew. Gonna be delicious. There we go. There's our mun flap snapper fillet. We got no meat left on the skin. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna feel the fish for any pin bones. You're gonna wanna cut those out and cut out any bloodline out of your fish because that's gonna make it taste really fishy. So we are gonna finish up with this mun snapper here. Flay up the rest of the fish today and I will see you guys in the kitchen. So this is the yield from the two amberjacks and one mun snapper that we got. You guys can see that is a ton of beautiful looking fish flays. 
This right here is the Amberjack filet, and it looks like this right here is going to be a mud and snapper. You guys can see the color difference a little bit. It has a little bit different texture, but the, both of these fish are gonna be absolutely delicious. We are going to be doing something very simple um, with these filets, because I will show you guys right over here, we have something special going on in the kitchen. This right here is for a video that is either out already or not out yet. I'm not sure how I'm posting these videos yet, but this right here is some fish fritters that we are making. So we are heating up the oil right here. We have the fish and we're going to be doing a little bit of a smorgasbord of fish dinner tonight. So to keep things simple, we are just going to be oven baking this fish so we can really taste the flavors of it with a little bit of Chef Paul's Magic Seafood Seasoning Blend here. This stuff was delicious. We used this on my Barracuda Catch Clean and Cook I did a couple videos ago. So we're just going to throw the fish on here, spray a little bit of Pam on there, put the uh, seasoning blend on, throw it in the oven for about 20 minutes. Alrighty guys, our fish is done and ready to be taken out of the oven. Up there. Here we go. There is our fish. Looks absolutely delicious. So now that the fish is finally cooled off, we can give it a try. So we're gonna try a little bit of both. We have the mutton snapper over here. So we're gonna give this fish a try right here. We'll just go for it. Wow, that is delicious, guys. That is, that is a really good fish. Um, nice soft texture, not mushy, but it kind of it kind of just melts in your mouth. It's absolutely delicious. I love that mud snapper. All that weight to finally get a keeper really paid off. Now it's time to try the amberjack. Here we go. Definitely a firmer fish, and I saw that when I played it. but you can't really tell the difference. Nope, that amberjack is also really good. And honestly, I, I was a little hesitant about keeping lesser amberjacks because I just hear a lot of things about amberjacks not being the best species to catch and cook. And you know, I've heard lots of rumors about them not being the finest fish in the sea when we have so many great options of fish here in South Florida. But that amberjack is just as good as the mud snapper. I think I like the mud snapper a little bit more but both fish are absolutely delicious. We are going to chow down on these along with our fish fritters, which is a different video here that I told you guys about. These are coming out absolutely delicious and you guys should totally check out that video as well. I'm not sure if it's gonna be uploaded before or after this video, but when it is uploaded, I will put it on the end screen card right here on the left side of the screen. Thank you guys so much for watching watching this video. If you guys did like it, make sure you guys hit the like button and consider subscribing down below. Until my next video, remember to keep living salty.